without show. It's the Lord Jose Robert T. Messiah. So check this out. Uh, Messiah's got a serious issue, issue in the Constitution issue. Um, and that is essentially, I'll just break it down for you, make it real simple. For 12 years, Messiah has been victim to witchcraft on account of witches as well as Satanists, as well as some other religions. Uh, they've got their own practices. I could break them down for you quite literally, uh, such as Hinduism and Sikhism and Islam. And uh, there's also different people groups who have their own different practices, which are cultural. And that's the way it's been in their lands for that much, for this much time. So it's not a racial thing. It's not a prejudice thing. It's a matter of fact thing. So just as much as, you know, the difference between black hair and blonde hair. So anyways, these things being the case, uh, Messiah's first issue comes from witchcraft. So let's just see what the witchcraft law previously was because it was repealed in 2018 and under Bill C-51. So Pretending to practice witchcraft, everyone who fraudulently pretends to exercise or to use any kind of witchcraft, sorcery, enchantment, or conjuration, or undertakes for consideration to tell fortunes, or pretends from his skill in or knowledge of an occult or crafty science to discover where or in what manner anything that is supposed to have been stolen or lost may be found, is guilty of an offense punishable in summary conviction. So that was removed in 2018 under Bill C-51 because it was considered an archaic law. So as for being archaic, it's no more archaic than thou shall not murder. Uh, it's a fundamental human law, uh, the practice of witchcraft, because anyone who supposes that you're unable to use your brain to touch other people's lives or affect people in a vast array of manners uh, is quite literally a heretic and just lying about it. Um, so it's, it's, it's a fundamental human law really, but also removed was, or was the law that prevents people from, uh, blasphemously libeling. So that's speaking, uh, no yes, written or speaking, uh, blasphemies against the person in the form of defamation. As well, Criminal Code 71 was removed, which is dueling. So basically challenging people to fights, pushing people into people to create fights, instigating fights. That was all uh, under dueling. Those were all considered to be archaic laws. So obviously uh, the Constitution is, or the government is unaware of the effects of such things that they have considered them to be archaic and not necessary for the controlling of society so messiah has to fight all this because it's caused so much damage from quite literally more than eight years of full-blown war neurosis which i have to fix every single day every time something happens and it triggers me up i have to fix it every day and th if i tell somebody hey don't do that they just do it again and again and again and again and again because basically they're trying to hunt the animal that seems injured. So Satanism and witchcraft have been the biggest problem in this country for some time. Since 1969, uh, that's when Satanism or the Satanic Bible was written, which should not be a legal entity in this country. If that book did not have that title, Satanism would not exist today. And that should have been caught right at the beginning. And the problem is Satan is the name of a character from the Bible. So right away that becomes copyright infringement. Then the the word Bible is also uh, is also a trademark name of another another religious book. So taking it a piggyback on the name Satanic Bible is what really spurred the religion of Satanism because I don't think you know anybody who would have been interested to read about LaVey's monster. Further, the Satanic Bible is full of all kinds of defamations against the church, so uh, um, it shouldn't really be a legal book. It's a hate religion, it's a hate crime, and uh, yeah, it's full of false information. Uh, but on account of the Satanic Bible, um, you probably don't know the legalities of heaven having not read the Bible, but turning to such filth as the Satanic Bible, is that 
Satan has sold the kingdom to the world back to Christ. So that's the only plus to come out of all this, and that's why it was endured. So there's that. But here is uh, the, where to find the answers to this question, question. and that's the Constitution. According to Department of Justice. Okay. So between section 2A, B, C, D, as well as section 7, as well as section uh, 15, as well as section, I think, 12, which is uh, cruel and unusual treatment or punishment. Uh, there should be an answer here somewhere. As well as section 1, which is reasonable limits, because under the freedom of religion, people have certain... Uh, right, but they have to be clear. A religion is something specific. It's not just whatever you want to believe. That that might be covered under another section, but if you do not have a system of belief worked out, you're not protected under freedom of religion. So I'm not going to read all. I'm going to read some, come to some points, and just see what I can uh, help people understand because people shouldn't be doing such things to other people. It's devastating to individuals, and then it becomes devastating to society as a whole. And this, obviously, would be the realm where we find people creating mental illnesses for people, as well as possessing people's souls or giving people demons. It all happens in this realm, this question. So everyone has a following fundamental freedom, a freedom, a freedom of conscience and religion. Okay, the purpose of Section 2A is to, pre is to prevent interference with profoundly held personal beliefs that govern one's perception of oneself, humankind, nature, and in some cases, a higher or different order of being. See, now, here's the thing. Um, the main purpose of the Constitution is to protect the individual from government action. So the Constitution does not protect individuals from individuals. No individual has the signature on the Constitution. So what that means, though, is whatever the government allows you to do is still the government's responsibility. Because it's like if you work for a company and you go out and you're supposed to perform a task, then you create some catastrophe and it ends up costing, you know, loads of money, then you're responsible, but more responsible than you is the company you work for. And it's natural contract law. That's the way it works, uh, unless otherwise stated in the contract. But um, the Constitution is a contract. So let's see, general. Um, Freedom of religion has been defined as the right to entertain such religious beliefs as, per, as a person chooses, the right to declare religious belief openly and without fear of hindrance or reprisal, and the right to manifest religious beliefs by worship and practice or by teaching and dissemination. Okay, the term religion has not been specifically defined, although the Supreme Court has stated that beliefs or practices rooted in secularism are not protected by the guarantee of freedom of religion. And further, that religion typically involves a particular and comprehensive system of faith and worship, uh, a belief in a divine, superhuman, or controlling power, and or personal conviction or belief that fosters a connection with the divine or with the subject or object of that spiritual faith. Okay. Eyes are going blurry. Okay, the Supreme Court has interpreted Section 2A broadly with a stated preference for leaving competing, uh, competing state interests, including competing rights to be reconciled under Section 1, or through a, the proportionality analysis in the case of judicial review of administrative decisions. Uh, rather than formulating internal limits to the scope of freedom of religion. Okay. Section 1 is considered a more flexible tool for balancing competing rights. 
you know, uh, in spite of the guarantees, broad scope, however, the court has also set certain limits, stating that the freedom to hold belief is broader than the freedom to act on them. Okay, so that goes back to what I was saying, or I don't know if I said it here, actually. Um, should witchcraft be allowed because the making of a flower in a pot by the methods of witchcraft where a flower was not supposed to grow is not the same as damaging people psychologically or spiritually or, you know, casting death spells and such as that. Because people do do those things and that's public information galore. It's all over the internet how to do such things. So the Supreme Court has stated on many occasions that freedom of religion can be limited where it interferes with the fundamental rights of others. See, that's something that most people also don't seem to understand about the Constitution. <coughs> Excuse me, that's... Um, you, you might have the right to believe or to do or to express, but as soon as you start causing other people problems, your right is limited. See, it's not the same as speaking. You can speak anything you want and that not cause problems for people. But once you start witchcrafting or you start, you know, believing things and slandering and doing things like that, see, there's also a big difference between freedom of expression, expressing yourself out openly and verbally attacking somebody specifically. So it goes the same with witchcraft. There's a general and then there's a witchcraft attack, which is obviously not constitutional by definition. So when individual rights come into conflict, the conflict ought to be resolved through the proper delineation of the rights and values involved. Mm. The Supreme Court chose to reconcile the competing religious freedom of evangelical community members of the TWU with the rights of LGBTQ persons through the proportionality analysis at the second stage of the framework for the judicial review of administrative decisions that engage charter rights. The majority found that the impact on the religious freedom of TWU community members was of minor significance and that the law society's decision represented a proportionate balance with the significant statutory objectives of ensuring LGBTQ equality and public confidence in the legal profession. The scope of section two is, however, is not, however, without limits. Um, a majority of the Supreme Court held that an indiv okay, an indigenous spiritual faith claim to protection of a sacred mountain valley site from a, a proposed ski resort uh, development did not fall within the scope of Section Two A, which does not protect the ob object. Of, or, of beliefs or the spiritual focal point of worship and the subjective meaning derived from them. Okay, let's see. Freedom of religion comprises both of individual aspects and a collective aspect. I'm going to just get as far as um, the first stage analysis, which is the first questions that we ask if somebody's religion is... Um, being infringed. Let's see here. The Supreme Court has noted that religion is about both religious beliefs and religious relationships. Okay, Recogni recognizing the linkages between religious belief and its manifestation through communal institutions and traditions, the court has found that measures that undermine the, ca the character of lawful religious institutions and disrupt the vitality of religious communities represents a profound interference with religious freedom. See, now here's the other thing to be noted. The right of peaceful assembly does not necessarily have to include more than one person because you can assemble all your things and go and do something on the street corner. You've assembled. That's assembly. So you have the right to do so without being hindered or reprised by anybody else. So the right to have a religion is an individual right. All the rights in the Charter are individual rights. So you have the right to assemble yourself in a religious fashion anywhere, just as well as you do with two people. Okay. So, uh, 
A majority of the court found that the refusal of the regulatory bodies to accredit a new law school governed by a mandatory covenant which precluded sexual relations outside of marriage between a man and a woman engaged Section 2A of the Charter by limiting the ability of members of the TWU community to enhance their spiritual development through studying law and environment defined by their religious beliefs. In a collective type claims, freedom of religion may encompass the, or intersect with other rights, such as freedom of expression, freedom of association, and equality. The question of whether corporations and other entities can claim the rights of freedom of religion remains open, where the majority found it unnecessary to decide this issue, while the, the minority found that religious organizations, not corporations, with a writ large hold Section 2A rights, uh, yeah, while corporations' ability to claim Section 2A rights uh, remains unclear, a corporation can challenge the constitutionality of law under which it is being uh, persecuted on the ground on the basis that the law infringes an individual's freedom of religion and that analytical analytical framework so here we go this is it it's very short okay give me one second here i just need to uh give my eyes a second to rest no oh. let's see okay uh, the Supreme Court has, has adopted the following test for determining whether there has been an infringement of Section 2A. An infringement of Section 2A of the Charter will be made out where the claimant or the claimant seriously or the claimant sincerely believes in a belief or practice that has a nexus, which is a continuation, stages, you know, something present that that causes you to reach for the next level, essentially with religion, and the impunge measure interferes with the claimant's ability to act in accordance with his or her religious beliefs in a manner that is more than trivial or insubstantial. So telling somebody, hey, you're too spiritually large, which I encountered very often, is a serious infringement, both of my nexus as well as the substantiality of my religion. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we'll just stop there, uh, unless I can go ahead and see. Uh, yeah, so it tells all about the nature and how to tell. It's very clear when it gets down to it. Uh, let's see. Selective issues in respect of freedom of religion. Freedom from conformity to religious dogma. So basically, you don't have to be following the religion according as, you know, a particular sect follows it. Uh, secularism and state neutrality. Let's see. Following a realistic and non-absolute approach, state neutrality is assured when the state neither favors nor hinders any particular religious belief. That is, when it shows respect for all po postures towards religion including that of having no religious beliefs whatsoever while taking into account the competing constitutional rights of individuals affected. A breach of duty of state neutrality must be established by proving that the state is professing, adopting, or favoring one belief to the exclusion of all others and that the exclusion has resulted in interference with the claimant's freedom of conscience or religion. So basically, all this to be read tells quite clearly what is to be expected in this country for your religion. And if you understand this and you apply it properly, then you should expect no hindrance or reprisal. And if you can see such truth, anything that is contrary to such truth should become very clearly manifest almost instantaneously the moment it appears. Just like light is visible and dark the moment it appears. All right, so that's the short presentation. That's what HPC Jai is facing. As I, as I said, there's also uh, Section 1, Section 12, Section 8, Section 15, uh, Section 24 to be considered, Section 52, and uh, a handful of other sections. So...
That's what HBC Jai, Lord Jai Zay, Rabbit Team Messiah is working on. Maybe you think I'm just a dumb stump, but this is not easy work. It's a lot of stuff. So anyone who wants to help out, that'd be great. You know, Messiah would appreciate that. All right. HC Lord Jai Zay, Rabbit Team Messiah. Without Shea, one mango needs to.